common loon is a symbol of wilderness in North America and is the loon most seen in Nova Scotia. Spending most of the winter on salt water, the adults return to freshwater lakes in the spring for the breeding season. The status of loons in Canada, and particularly in Nova Scotia, has been a concern because lakes in parts of Nova Scotia are affected by acid precipitation and high mercury concentrations in and around Kejimakujik National Park. Mercy Tobiotic Research Institute, in partnership with Environment Canada and Parks Canada, developed a project in 2013. This project focused on adult survivorship and site fidelity through reciting of loons that were previously banded by the Canadian Wildlife Service and the Biodiversity Research Institute in Maine. 58 loons have been banded on approximately 30 lakes in and around Kejimakujik National Park. Two banding periods occurred, one from 1995 to 1997 and the second from 2009 to 2012. Because mercury bioaccumulation may negatively affect loon survival, survivorship by reciting banded loons provides valuable information about the aquatic health of our lakes. Every spring, loons will often return to the same lake and attempt to reclaim and defend their territories. Once the ice has melted, male and female loons meet on the lake to begin the breeding season. Loons are generally social birds. However, during the nesting season, they become very territorial and will aggressively defend their territory, keeping other pairs and non-breeding birds away. There is only one pair per territory. However, one lake, if big enough, can contain several territories. Loons will attempt to claim and defend the best territory possible, as the choice will influence nesting success. A plentiful fish supply and a safe nesting site makes an ideal territory. The nest site is most commonly located on an island, as this is often the best way to avoid predators. Loons typically only come up on land to mate and incubate the eggs. The incubation period lasting from 26 to 31 days is shared by both the male and the female. Loons are excellent swimmers and divers, but they are very clumsy on land because their legs are placed far back on their dense bodies. Building their nest close to the water allows the birds to slip directly from the nest into the water. However, a sudden increase or decrease in water level can drastically affect productivity. In some cases, if nest failure occurs early in the breeding season, they abandon the nest, such as this one, due to a sudden drop in water level. The pair may then successfully re-nest elsewhere. Loons are also known for their calls. The most well-known call is the whale, the haunting call that loons give back and forth to figure out each other's location when the pair is separated. The tremolo, a waving call, is given when the loon is alarmed or to announce its presence on the lake. The yodel is the male's territorial claim and each male has his own. Hoots are short calls given to keep in contact with each other when in close proximity. Loons have different daily activities and different behaviors depending on the lake and the time of the year. Studies around North America have led to a better understanding of these birds. MTRI's goal is to continue working to further enhance these studies. This year, the Loon Project field season started on April 28th, at the beginning of the breeding season. The MTRI Loon crew is trying to recite banded loons with powerful high quality scopes by canoeing lakes, but the task is not easy. The bands are located on loon legs, typically with two different color bands on each leg. The majority of the time, loons are swimming and fishing, making it difficult to see their legs. However, during preening, loons will often lift each leg out of the water to groom, making it possible to see the bands. Band sighting is challenging, and keeping the right distance between spotter and loon will often determine success. Following them too closely may disturb the birds, but anything beyond 200 meters is often too far away to positively identify band colors.
It is difficult to foresee a loon's behavior, and sometimes loons can be very elusive and sneaky. They will sometimes dive and swim underwater, far enough away that you may not see them resurfacing. An unusual form of escape that loons perform is called sinking. By compressing air from inside their body, a loon is able to descend slowly much like a submarine, making it almost impossible to see. A leg band sighting is often successful when a loon preens. However, sighting a leg band doesn't only depend on the bird's behavior. Weather has a lot to do with it too. Following loons from a distance in a canoe works well on a calm day. But on a windy day, due to the canoe bobbing up and down, a scope can only be used on shore, which decreases the chances of seeing loons. The state of the common loon is of some concern. Local and long range air pollution is affecting the food chain. Samples taken from several fish species in the lakes of southwest Nova Scotia in the last decade indicate a rise in methylmercury concentrations. The ever-increasing development of our inland lake shores continues to decrease the availability of safe nesting sites. The adult loon population is declining. We need your help. Consider becoming a loon watch volunteer or join a researcher for a day on the lakes. Get involved. Thank you.